Hi, this is Amber with Resale Genius. Although I'm, I'm working on Poshmark, this can totally be used for eBay, for Goat, for Grailed, like any anything, Macari, you name it. I did a shorter video on this that you can see in my, uh, in my YouTube channel, but this one is really going into detail on how to get there. Now, my first video was on ChatGPT3 and how to use that. Well, today I'm going to do it on a different tool, which I really like. It's called Bard. And Bard is Google's uh, com like competition to ChatGPT. And ChatGPT 3 is what originally came out. ChatGPT 4 is better, but it costs money. So ChatGPT 3 is still free. Bard is totally free. And it's you know just as advanced, if not more so, than uh, ChatGPT 4. So I like free things. I like Google. And so I've just been using Bard. So how do you get to Bard? Well, I use it so much that I actually have it up here in my favorites bar. <laughs> if you just go down, open Google, and just type in Bard, you will see it right at the top here. And click on it. And it opens. Now, if you have not used it before, it might ask you to sign in with your Gmail account or your Google account. If you don't have one, create one. If you already have one and you don't want to use it, then go ahead and just create one that you just use for this. It saves all your stuff right here. And the other thing I really like about Bard is that you can just click and it will save it to a Google Doc for you. You can also have Poshmark up at the same time and just copy and paste over to Poshmark. But I do like to have a record of all of my descriptions and my titles and things like that because I like to relist as new, which means you relist it totally from brand new, not copy listing. And that just makes sure that it's actually looked at as brand new by Poshmark. So here we go. So today we're just going to do two examples. I have not done these yet, so I hope that they work. We're going to start with this gorgeous little Louis Vuitton backpack. I'm not actually selling this by the way, I love it. You actually, you can wear it like this or you can wear it like as a bracelet. Okay, so this is the, not the mini backpack, but it's like even smaller than the mini. I can't even remember the name of it right now. If I had the name and the model number, I would type that in, but I don't have that. Mini backpack. Okay, so it's called the Monogram Palm Springs Charm. And do they have a model number here? Now, one thing you can do is you can, you know, copy and paste this and use it for your description, but that's not what we're doing today. We're doing it with Bard. So I don't see a model number, but that's okay because we have the official name, and I know it's the official name because I remember because I bought it. Yeah, we've done. So I'm just going to copy that. Bard. Okay, we're back into Bard. Can you write a title and a description for Poshmark for the name Monogram Palm Springs Charm? Let's see what happens. Okay, there we go. So we have the title Louis Vuitton Monogram Palm Springs Charm, gently used. I probably wouldn't put gently used in there. I'd probably put that in the description section. And in terms of making this better, I think it's a best practice, let's say, to use up all the characters in your description. And I can tell just by looking at this that there's more room here. So I would probably put a few more keywords. And the cool thing about this is that there's actually keywords down here. So you could throw any of these keywords in there. What I might do is actually look up the model number and I might put that in the title. I think that's a really good thing to do. Let's go down to the description. So it's an authentic Louis Vuitton charm, gently used, no major flaws. If there were flaws, you would change this because you have to disclose all flaws no matter how minor because that will help you avoid cases and you know negative ratings. And it's just the good thing to do. Got a little cute little sentence here. It even has the dimensions and where it was made. And then here's a nice little extra description and then I would probably just take out this 
because people who stuff keywords into the bottom of their Poshmark listings, I, I think that that's really silly. It doesn't help your SEO, doesn't help people find it. But what I would do is I might pick three of these and use it for a style tag. Now we're not done yet because the next stage, what you wanna do is you want to get a little bit better of a description. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna ask it to add the Google Merchant fields or the Google shopping fields and that's what businesses have to put onto their listings in order to show up on Google shopping. Now the reason I'm doing this is because Poshmark listings show up on Google because Poshmark pays for ads. Not all of them show up but they'll have a higher chance of showing up if you have the right fields in your description. And Bard, another cool thing about it, is that it remembers your conversation. So unless you start a brand new session, it will remember everything that we've talked about with it so far. So what I'm gonna say here is, can you redo the description and add the Google shopping fields? This is real time really thinking hard on this one. All right, here we go. So we've done it again. Got the description again, changed it a little bit. Here are some of the, the Google fields for an item like this. So brand, model, condition, color, material, size, gender, you know, etc. For clothing, they're a little bit different, but you just want to make sure that you include all of those and don't forget something. The other thing that it has missed, and, and believe me, it's not always 100% accurate, that's why you have to look at it, but it's missed like the original retail price, for example, and that's something that I always put in there because I know that is a Google field. Now here's another really cool thing about Bard. I love this. Every time you ask it to do something, if you look right up here, it says view other drafts. They always do three. And so if I go like this, I can look at number two. And you know, you can see, is it slightly different? Let me just go back and forth. Yeah. So you can see this one says like finish with gold tone hardware. And this one doesn't have that, it says something else. Reversible charm features the iconic da 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 da. And number three is different again. So you can pick which one you like, uh, which one is the most accurate. And that's for all of the ones I did. Even if I went all the way up to the top, when I asked this question, that would be there. It goes away after you ask another question. It's only on the most recent question. Let me switch it up and let me grab the next product, okay? The next product, I just grabbed some of my shoes. I can align that with the camera. These are Nike Shocks. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the name that's on here. And I'm also gonna use the colors and the skew, which is down the bottom. Sorry, I'm doing everything like a mirror, so. <laughs> but I will show you what they look like. Here they are. Aren't they beautiful? But I'm not actually selling these either. But let's pretend we're selling them. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to switch it up a little bit this time. And I'm gonna say, please create an optimized title and description for a Poshmark listing that ensures it sells fast. The item is, you can talk to this like a human, you know? You can just be like bare bones, you can ask it to do like different variations, and when you put something in this field here, it's called a prompt. So this is the prompt line, and there's actually like whole classes on prompt design because the better your prompt the better the output obviously and there is like a trick to prompting AI on these large language models so uh, if you you know give that a little Google you could maybe learn some tips and tricks 
One thing I will say is when you see something that's inaccurate, that is something that AI does naturally. So when AI makes something up and pretends like it's real, it's called a hallucination. It's an AI hallucination. And it just does this because it you know, doesn't want to not give you an answer. So sometimes it'll give you an incorrect answer and that's called a hallucination. And the more times this language model learns, finishes prompts and gets told different things, it will get better and better and better and it learns by itself. So in the beginning, somebody had to set it up, they had to put the data in, chat GPT or Bard like, you know, scoured the whole internet and read the whole internet and read all the books and just got all the data they could and then Potentially there was some other data that got put in and then there were people who worked for OpenAI or Google who went in and fine-tuned the model and then the model, because it is part of generative AI and deep learning, it can teach itself now. So now it's just going to keep on going and going and get better and better. Uh, okay. Sorry, I went on a little sidetrack there. So please create an optimized title and description for a Poshmark listing that ensures it sells fast. The item is a pair, and we're just gonna say they're new this time, a pair of new Nike sneakers. Nike shops are four, um, A R three, five, six, five, eight hundred, and the color you wanna put in. Color is, I love Nike's colors. Wild the ice, sail, and TLC. Okay, so let's see what happens. Pressing enter now. Here we go. So it's not being very creative on the title, but it's putting everything in that you know you kind of need to. Um, it did throw out something that reminds me that I forgot to put the size in. So I would add my size there, comes with original box and tags, and then it says, these brand new Nike Shocks sneakers are the perfect addition to your collection. The vibrant guava ice color is sure to turn heads, and the sleek blah 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 adds a touch of luxury, blah 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 blah. Okay, so now we're going to say something else that I think you might find interesting. We are going to ask Bard how much we should price this for. Now, hit or miss, but let's just see what happens, okay? How much should these I list these for in terms of price? So it will depend on a few factors, incurring the current market value, condition, your desired profit margin, the retail was 150 when they were first released in 2019. These are all things that are great to put into the description, by the way. You know, drop date 2019, retail price 150. Uh, the current market value of these sneakers is likely to be higher as they're now considered to be a limited edition item. So if they're brand new, you could list them for 200 to 250. If they are gently used, 150 to 200. And if they're heavily used, you could do 100 to 150. Uh, if you want them to sell quickly, you'll need to price them competitively. And then they give you some tips. Now, there's the other three drafts, which you can check out. You can always add to it. So, you know, add the Google merchant fields or can you create a more enticing title for Washmark for these shoes. Okay, so here's another one. <laughs> so it's got, you know, why they think it's more enticing, the high impact words, the call to action, the, new, the USP. Uh, so again, you know, you can just play around with this and you can fine tune it, but if you really want to get it done super, super quickly, you basically would have just taken this first one and you would save it to Google Docs. And so you can provide feedback here and here's the share and export. So right here, you can export to Google Docs, just hit that 
it's creating the document and it's created. Now if I want to open it, boom. And this is because I'm logged in with my Google account to UBARD and I have a Google Drive and I have Google Docs. So there you go. So now I can save this uh, in my repertoire so that I can always, you know, relist these as new. I can even add photos on there if I want to, or I could just go ahead and copy this whole thing like this and then open Poshmark and paste it right into a new listing. So that is how you use Bard to create an incredible listing with a title and a description, all the right fields so that your listing will hopefully show up on uh, Google Shopping, and it can even give you advice on how to price your item. For those of you who did ask in the comments to do the ChatGPT one, you would just Google, I just always Google it, ChatGPT3. And I know it's made by OpenAI, and so this is the one. So ChatGPT, and I'm already logged in because I'm logged into my Google account, and it recognized me already. So I go straight to here. Now, if you have not used uh, ChatGPT before, you would need to sign in, sign up. I just I did it with my Google because it's easier. Here are some examples and capabilities and limitations. I guess it's on GPT 3.5 now. And then this one is locked because this one is, uh, it costs money. But we could do the same thing here. And for fun, why don't we just go ahead and do that so you can see the difference. Can you? Write me a title and description or watch mark for a pair of Mickey four sides and seven. I'm not gonna forget that. Um, and the color of ice sail. And it's gonna say gold, honestly. So you can see how quickly this drafts it and trendy and stylish Nike shocks, da 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 da. So, you know, info in, info out. I, I didn't get too uh, detailed on what I was putting in, so it didn't get that detailed going out, but it already knows that this uh, guava ice is a colorway, which is what you call the colors of Nike shoes, and they already have the characteristics of these shoes. Like these have a responsive cushioning system. That's correct. They knew that already. The pop of color, the sleek silhou silhouette. So all of those things like are true. Now you do want to look at it and make sure. And the way that you can help the language model learn either BARD or, or ChatGPT is by doing the feedback here. And then again, you can add to it, you know, please add the Google merchant fields to the listing. This is what I like because we have the description up top and then we have the, the ones below. So ChatGPT actually does do a little bit of a better job on, on this, I think, just by comparing the two. Uh, one thing I will say is that BARD is connected to the internet, so it can search for real life things today. Whereas ChatGPT is only as good as the data it put in. It's not like open and searching the internet, or at least 3 wasn't. 4 and 3.5 may, they may be more updated, but I know ChatGPT 3 was not. Okay, so we've got that, that's really good. And then let's see how it does on pricing. What? Should I these shoes for? Let's see what happens. So in this case, they're basically saying they can't give me a price. So now you can see like it did a little bit better in the description with those Google merchant fields, but then it really fell short on price. So, you know, again, it's whatever one you're most comfortable with. I personally have been using BARD just because of some of those things I mentioned, like the three drafts, the easy export to Google Docs, and I find the information really good. Uh, you can use both, you can use one or the other. They're both large language models. One is made by OpenAI and one is made by Google. 
that is today's video. I hope you found it helpful. I hope this will save you a ton of time in uh, you know, writing your descriptions and your titles and also even giving you some advice on how to price your listings or what to say if you get stuck. And I mean, you can ask this thing anything. Here, let's do like a little experiment. Since this one isn't current, it might not know the answer to this, but let's just try. What are the best selling brands on Poshmark? So it's, it is, the, the data is still 2021, so that's as, as new as it gets. But it did, as of 2021, give us some brands. And those do look totally accurate for 2021. I'm, now I'm just curious, let's just see what Bard says. What are the most popular brands on Poshmark? Enter. Let's see. Thinking, thinking. Wow, it even has pictures. Okay, so Nike, Lululemon, Free People, Kate Spade, Coach, Michael Kors, anything vintage, that's totally true. Now if we wanted to see some of the other drafts, here's just a regular list very similar to the list that ChatGPT came up with and that really shows that the tried and true popular brands the staples haven't really changed that much over time Nike is always going to be popular Kate Spade is always going to be popular you know Levi's always popular they've been around for over 200 years so things like that now these kind of hot boutique brands like Aviator Nation that some people might not have heard of and even that is actually kind of like a year behind. I mean, like it was popular like a year ago or two. Those things change constantly. But the tried and true ones, they stay pretty similar. And number three looks kind of similar to number one. The other thing that's kind of cool about this is that you have the websites where it got the stuff from. So you can click any of these. And of course, you can modify the response, give it some feedback, share it, and you can even Google it. So there you have it, a little helping tool for Poshmark. But these tools help for anything, writing your blog, just asking random questions, having it really do anything for you. I mean, this is a huge, huge change in the landscape of artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence has been around for a long time, and this is just a sliver of what artificial intelligence is and does, the large language models. Yeah, this is pretty life-changing for a lot of people and companies, and it will definitely change how people work professionally and personally. So I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, thanks for watching, and please, please, if you liked this content, I would love it if you subscribed and gave me a like or a comment, and if you want to hear something else, give me a comment, and I really appreciate you. Thank you so much. Bye!